well, here it is. The day that we've been waiting for for the past, um, what, only two years? Well, that's actually pretty quick. It feels like much longer. But you probably know what I'm talking about. Subnautica Below Zero is finally out in all of its 1.0 glory, and we have decided to cover the whole story not as fast as physically possible. The script is wrong. This is going to be a really long video. Also, before we start, the support on the last bunch of Subnautica videos has just been amazing. It's helped our channel out tremendously, and with that being said, if you are new to this channel, then please consider subscribing if you like the video. Also, check out our Discord. It's very cool. Um, <laughs> I just remembered what image I'm putting up on the screen. Also, if you're only interested in the ending, then you can just skip to that point using the timestamps, but I would advise against that, unless you've already watched previous, you know, recaps of the story, and you already know what's happened up till that point. Because then you're just kind of skipping to the ending of a Netflix series, you know? You're just not gonna get the enjoyment. Well, now that all that boring stuff is out of the way, let's get into the actual video. Alright, so the game starts off with a cutscene. And no, I don't mean the pangling repeatedly falling. Although that is funny. No, that's just a loading screen. This is the actual cutscene. In this cutscene, you as Robin Ayu, after stealing a bunch of stuff from Altera, is trying desperately to get down to 4546B to find out what happened to her sister Sam. Unfortunately, Altera have the planet under surveillance. And so obviously, you know, you fly right beside a falling asteroid to avoid detection as any perfectly sane-minded person would. And of course, somehow, all of that goes wrong, and the asteroid smashes right into the side of your ship, conveniently causing you to deploy your life pod right above the water. And then you crash into the snowy wastes of Sector Zero. Upon landing, you immediately take your chance to get the fuck out of there, and right as you exit, the ship spontaneously combusts. And now you're on your own, out in the harsh colds of Sector Zero, with nothing but a PDA and some supplies that you had on the ship. After having realized, oh shit, this game has cold and freezing mechanics now, you quickly run to the corridor to your left, or your right, depending on how you left your ship, and dive into the freezing waters of Sector Zero, but this time in 1.0. See, it's it's different this time. After getting in the life pod, the PDA lady, who I'll just call, um... What's a good name, uh... Uh, you know what? I was gonna go with Joffrey, but I feel like, uh, H is better. So, um, we'll just call the life pod lady H. Anyways, inside the life pod, H tells us the usual. Get stuff in order to survive. Breathe air in order to not die, you know, all the usual video game stuff. And then if you explore around, she'll give you some waypoints to get some Altera supply caches and, you know, all that boring stuff. And then if you explore some more, you'll hear something quite unusual. I mean, maybe it's actually a day-to-day, -day, you know, kind of thing on 4546B, but it's, uh, it, it really is quite strange when you hear it. Anyway, it sounds something like this. Sounds like a distress call. Transmission of unknown origin. Source of transmission depth calculated at approximately 200 meters. Now if you hear this, you'd probably be quite confused, and rightfully so, because, because even the precursor messages from the original Subnautica didn't sound anywhere near as strange as this. They were all just garbled nonsense. Oh wait, I forgot to tell you, didn't I? My mistake, sorry. Jeez, just slipped my mind. This message is actually a distress signal from a precursor storage sanctuary. Remember? Like how they poured their minds into storage and destroyed their corporeal forms? All that stuff? You didn't dare miss our videos, didn't you? Okay, well in case you did, then um, check it out in the iCard. It's um, it exists. It's not the best video, but it's a video. Anyway, point is, if you go to this place, you'll find this door, which looks quite unusual to you if you've never played Subnautica. But if you're an avid gamer like myself, then you recognize that this is a simple precursor airlock. And passing through it, you find a large open area which has clearly fallen into disrepair over the, um, years? Decades? How f***ing long's it been? Jesus. Anyway, I'm not a professional at building alien sanctuaries or whatever they're called, but I can tell you for sure that that shouldn't be there. Anyway, walking further into the building, we see Big Cube. But as we already know, it's not the OG Big Cube. You know, like from the original Subnautica. 
But this is Big Cube V2, which instead of housing tons of precursor technology, houses a precursor. Who we have to save, or else power will run out and his stored data will be erased. Now of course we leap to save him, like the true altruists we are. But when he initiates data transfer, all I can say is, um, we had a slightly different meaning for the term storage medium. Because while we presented the PDA, he thought we meant our brain. perceive a boundary between cybernetic and organic components. My mind is not a component. You sound angry. We will allow you a moment to process. Don't you go silent on me. Hello? This is not happening. That's the explanation. It's not happening. Now, of course, immediately after the uh, whole switcheroo thing, we start going through immediate stages of grief. No, I'm kidding, um... Wait, actually, maybe not, that's neat. Anyways, we return to our life pod with our head full of an unnamed alien, who after some talking says his name is Alan. Or, uh, sorry, I mean, um, Al-Ann. Oh, jeez, can't imagine how I messed that up. He then tells us that if we want him out of our head, which we do, then he needs somewhere to go somewhere permanent, like a body. He also tells us that there are sanctuaries around the map that should have the required instructions for us to be able to make him a body. But unfortunately, he's been in hibernation for so long that he can't even connect to his precursor network. Damn 5G towers. And he doesn't know where they are. Luckily, he does happen to know how we could get him reconnected. And when we scan one alien artifact, he tells us that more alien artifacts are sprinkled all over the map. And while he doesn't know the locations for them, he does tell us where some are as we progress through the game. Or get in close proximity to one. Upon hearing this, we go scouting. And after some searching, looting, post-traumatic stress disorder, and exploring, we find this nice island which broadcasts a very friendly message. Exploring the island, we can find some nice sights, some fat penguins, and one more thing. Now, for those of you who have seen our previous videos on this topic, you'll know what's about to happen. But for those who are new, I'll just let you watch. See? Nothing. This is a completely safe location to stand in, and nothing is going to- oh! Stop right there, Altera. You're out of bounds. I'm not with Altera. Then your position is doubly precarious. What do you mean? If you're telling the truth, you're out of your mind. If you're lying, there'll be hell to pay. Wait! Who are you? Stay off my land. Okay, well, I'm not gonna lie, I went to the wrong ledge, I'm Anyways, having said that, you're probably wondering who the mysterious survivor is. No? Well, um... I'll tell you anyway, and truth is, it's very easy to find out. All you have to do to find out the identity of the masked survivor is go to the waypoint of the unknown driver's last location, which is here, in the lily pad zone. And right next to this waypoint, you'll find an entrance to a cave, with some creatures in it, which have a very strange defense method, and make for some very abstract art on the cave walls. Anyways, entering her base through the moon pool, we find her prawn suit MK3, which she has heavily modified with a chelicerate, um arm on her prawn suit arm i don't know how to call it uh, we'll do a video on we'll we'll mention we'll explain the prawn suit in a future video okay it doesn't matter we then see a door leading to her actual living quarters and opening it gives you yet another heart attack i told you to stay off my land you trained that thing? Next time I'll let him tear you to ribbons, Altera. I'm not with Altera. I'm Robin Ayu. 
I'm looking for information about my sister Sam. I think you might have crossed paths. Bull crap. I suggest you take the time you need to come to your senses and then get off my sea base. If you're not Altera, why don't you disable that damn tracking satellite tower instead of barging into my sea base? Maybe once Altera's off my back, I'll remember something about your sister. There's some junk on that table that might help. I couldn't get it to work. She says her name is Marguerite Maida, and she clearly doesn't trust you, as if you couldn't tell that already. She tells you to go deactivate a radar surveillance system that has been spying on her for a while, made by Altera, of course. To do this, she gives you a scannable test override module, but to make it, you have to go through hell and back, because... See, for most things in the game, you can get them with a little bit of determination, but this one is just... It's just painful, because it requires the parallel processing unit, which is only obtainable by visiting wrecks of the Mercury 2, and brutally tearing them out of the crashed ship's carcass. But wait, Mercury 2? What's that, you're probably asking? And it's essentially just another crashed ship. I mean, what, are you really surprised? It's 4546B. How wouldn't it just, you know, be a crashed ship randomly there? And you want to know what it died to? You guessed it, the quarantine enforcement platform, i.e. the big boom boom gun. Now, of course, if you want more detail about it, which wouldn't be shocking, considering that it does have quite a lot of lore behind it, then I urge you to check out our new video on the story of... Why did I say our new video? That video is like two months old. Yeah, um, anyway, check out our video on the story of the Mercury 2. Um, it's, it's, it's a pretty decent video, actually. Out of all the videos I've made, that's, um, that's one I feel is pretty good, actually. Anyways, let's move on. Obviously, won't show too much of the footage of me getting the modules, but the general point is... You find these types of cabinet things, and you open them with a laser cutter, and then you scan the thing inside, and then you craft the parallel processing unit, and away you go to making the test override module, and after making it, you go back to the Rocket Island, or Delta Island as it's now called, and after some tinkering with the radar thing, you finally disable it, at which point Marguerite Mato will call you and tell you to meet her at the Greenhouse, which is on a large iceberg and about a kilometer away. Alright Altera, you win this round. Come find me at my greenhouse. I'm about a kilometer east of your position up on an iceberg. I have a present for you. I'll come by if I have time. <laughs> sure, whatever. If you have time for me in your busy social calendar. Going there, she tells us about her sister Sam and how we can have the databank entries of her talking to Sam. We find one in her greenhouse and two in her house, and they reveal that while Sam was working for Altera, they found a huge frozen creature, which is located at these coordinates. They are up on screen now, or possibly a message about something controversial, I have no idea. And the creature had the Karar pustules on it, and Altera was excavating it and developing it, but not for the most altruistic of purposes, so to speak, if you catch my drift. Anyway, Sam wanted to stop them because no one should wield the power of Bivari- Wrong game, sorry. I mean, Karar. Point is, she wanted them to stop researching the Karar for good. And on this crusade, she met Marguerite Maida in the process, who recommended that she stands up for what she believes in, and that she should put explosives in the cave and detonate them. Sam does this, and dies in the process. As well as getting a security guard, named Parvan, killed. Which is also really sad, considering that he has a wife and kids that he talks about in a few PDAs. But we'll probably do, like, a, the story of Altera characters, or whatever the f video. I mean, we can we can make like a million of these at this point. But that's not all. Because as I was recording this very video, I stumbled across a map that showed Altera's outposts across Sector Zero. And upon first glance, I thought, wow, they really need to start updating this. Man, Unknown Worlds needs to get on their sh man, honestly. Because Base Omega was removed like 60 versions ago. Or was it? Well, it actually was, but then um, I'm assuming they brought it back at some point. And uh, yeah, there it was. In the very place it said, in Lilypad Island's big chunk of rock. Completely blown to bits, might I add. Alan comments that the laboratory was sabotaged internally, and considers that, you know, since it's a laboratory, with a lot of DNA analysis and specimen analysis looking stuff going on, as well as a literal poster of the Karar bacterium, I don't think it's a stretch to say that Sam also blew this base to smithereens. Anyways, after Marguerite lets us get some more of her databanks, in which she explains her journey to Sector Zero on the husk of a dead Reaper Leviathan, which is pretty epic, but we'll do a video on that later, so 
don't worry about that. We'll, we'll do a video on that very, very soon. If you're wondering why all these videos are coming out now and not before this, even though this has already been, like, a stable thing for a while, we just wanted to make sure no new stuff comes out so we wouldn't have to remake the videos because that's really stupid. Anyway, after revisiting the PDA Just Two Friends Talking, which was her and Sam Ayu talking, I noticed that uh, our suspicions about who destroyed Laboratory Omega were completely right. But we also find out that Sam had made or found some kind of antidote, whether that be Enzyme 42 or some other antidote that she made herself. Anyway, having learned of how our sister actually died, and having become acquainted with Marguerite Maida, you finally have no more goals other than to get Alan the f out of your head! Anyway, point is, let's go get that bread. I mean, uh, blueprints. And doing this also lets me talk about a big part of this game, which is the above water arctic zone, and goddamn man this place has it all. Old Altera research sites, giant terrifying leviathans, an old bunker that used to be Marguerite's and was then deleted after the old story imploded on itself. It really is just a great place. Having said that, we will cover all the Altera locations and all that stuff in future videos, and they'll be linked below. Because I really just don't want a 60,000 hour long video, it's just, it's so annoying to edit long videos, and this video is already really long. I mean, I have to cut down a 22 plus minute long recording already. Like, that's how long the video is right now, and that's ridiculous. Also, this part, right now, is being written before the game actually comes out. So, uh, sorry to ruin the immersion, but, um, no, this video was not made in five hours. Anyway, point is, it's got a lot of cool places, including the Phi Robotics Center, where Sam worked and actually helped develop the spy pingling for Altera. And uh, this place is pretty cool because you can also find the Snow Fox Dock Fragment, which is absolutely f***ing integral for exploring anywhere further in the Arctic Spires or Hover Zones. But to get anywhere near those places, you have to activate a bridge with a little repairing, and by that I mean just shoving in a big old canister of hydraulic fuel. You're off to the Hover Zones and navigating through the maze of ice, you f and we find a little cave with some giant precursor cables leading to it. Anyways, in the sanctuary, we find an alien body part scan, which is the tissue, and you can then head into the deep lily pads biome, if you survive the ice worms and squid sharks, that is, and you should find a beautiful boiling hot biome, which has a ton of really cool mushroom plants which release spores into the air. So, um, if you're like me, then bring the anti-allergy medication, because you're gonna need it, seriously. <laughs> Anyways, going deeper into the deep lily pads, you can find a building that looks like this. And after navigating through it, you find the Architect Skeleton Fragment. And with that, we are off to make our very own precursor. Just one part remaining. And coincidentally, it is absolute hell to find. Because not only is it the deepest part out of the bunch, but it's also located in the Crystal Caves. And you know who else lives there? Yo m- The Shadow Leviathan who we made a full video on, so if you're interested in that, then check it out in the iCard. Anyways, like, pretty much on the entrance of the Crystal Caverns or somewhere in the middle, we see this giant and very conveniently placed crystal formation, inside of which, you guessed it, more crystals. Oh, and also an entrance to the Precursor Base, if that matters at all. Then we get to navigate through a beautiful maze of crystals, and then we finally find the Sanctuary, which contains the final blueprint for our Precursor Vessel. And now we craft. And as we do the epic Minecraft on him, we also get some insight as to what he used to do. And I'll just play the cinematic, and then I'll explain what he says, essentially. So, Alan, you said your people came here in search of a cure? I was a researcher. You were a scientist? Like me? My people regarded my scientific contributions with particular interest. As I said, like me. If that is your interpretation. So, how did your valuable scientific mind wind up infected? Not my mind, my body. Perhaps you should build the next component. So you came here to search for a cure? I led the mission. Does that mean the bacteria got out on your watch? This subject is uncomfortable. If you would like to know more, I will ask that you first construct the final component. This is the last piece. Soon I will be autonomous again. What will you do with your newfound freedom? I must return home to make amends. Amends? For the bacteria? There seems to be a lot you're not telling me. It is hard for me to find the words. I must collect my thoughts. We have all the necessary components. You may initiate body fabrication sequence from the terminal. You still owe me an explanation. 
I understand. Commencing storage needs in third location. A mistaken for bacteria was an answer. I thought my solution was foolproof. I was wrong. Did you cause the accident? Yes. I do not wish to speak about it. We can come back to this. Research. Tit for tat. You've probed my mind. I scan your body. Commencing data to transfer. Did it work? Are we... Some time since I last stretched out in so many dimensions. Like waking from a dream. Whoa. Hey. You're really not in my head anymore? There are some remnants. Would you like your memories of me removed as well? Are you kidding? No way. You still owe me the end of your story. <sighs> I told you I must return home. To assess. Repair. Make amends. Tell me more. When the bacteria escaped, it was my fault. I disobeyed the directive from my network. Oh, no. We noticed that a species of Leviathan young produced an enzyme that is efficient against the bacteria. I thought if we incubated sea dragon eggs, we might expedite their hatching. I was not wrong. But? It would appear that sea dragon parents are stronger and more motivated than our facility was rated to handle. And the bacteria got out everything. How many survived the outbreak back home? Are they still waiting for someone to bring back a cure? I do not know. Can I help? The fact that I withheld this information does not concern you. I was certainly manipulative. And I've also made my own share of mistakes. I'm still committed to helping. I accept your help. Find me at the gate when you are ready. In the meantime, I must prepare. Okay, so essentially the precursors came to 4546B to find a cure for the Karar. By the way, totally missed that in a few of our old in a, in a few of our old videos. So um, thanks to the commenter that pointed that out. I'll have the comment on screen, or maybe I won't. Maybe I'm just a bit dumb, but um, you know who you are. Thanks. I actually didn't know that. Honestly, I always looked past that detail. And uh, essentially, he says that he led the mission, and he was also kind of, you know, maybe a teensy weensy bit totally responsible for the Karar getting out. And how did it get out, you ask? Well, remember Big Cube? Yeah, yeah, that happened. And uh, so he stored himself, and so did all the others. He also says that him taking sea dragon eggs was him going against command from his leaders, and that he was very reckless and feels very guilty about it all. He also says that he isn't sure if anyone is still alive, and he says that he won't speak much more on the subject, because it's a painful memory for him. He then tells us to meet him at the Architect Phasegate facility, which is where the story used to end, but not anymore, because when you go there, you find this. Are you preparing to leave, Alan? Yes. There is much to do. still wish to leave with me? Beyond this teleport, there is no turning back. Are you kidding? I can't pass up a chance to see where Architects come from. Besides, I don't have another ride. I do not know what we will find there. The others may be sick or angry. If they live at all. Or 
You could find peace. Family. I hope you are right. Please complete any business you still have on this planet. Join me on the other side when you are ready to leave. Anyway, so as I was saying, meeting him at the gate, he tells us that he is leaving to his homeworld and that we can join him if we don't have any unfinished business on 4546B. He then powers up the teleporter and tells us to join him on the other side when we're ready. Joining him, we can see the backside of the mountain with a ton of floating precursor pillars. He then tells us that he's going to get the phase gate ready and then tells us to go fix some of the columns. With a sweet set of precursor arms, that is. And with them, you graciously fly around fixing stuff and totally not stumbling and nearly falling off the edge. After that, you give him back the arms, and then he flies up into the middle, and all the pillars form a spaceship around him. Could not make this up if I tried, honestly. This is a strange ending. A good one, but a strange one. Anyway, so as I was saying, the spaceship gets formed, and he is at the center of the spaceship, literally attached to it and controlling it. He tells you to get in, and as you get sucked up into the spaceship, you hit your head and die. Okay, all jokes aside though, that must, that must really hurt. And then you brace. And as you fly towards the phase gate, it opens slowly, revealing a, um... I don't even know what color that is. That's like greenish, uh... Greenish something? I'm not sure. Anyways, you fly through it, and you end up seeing something very similar to what you saw in Subnautica when your spaceship went to warp speed. But instead of seeing purple smoke and electricity, it's precursor pillars. And then after some near misses with a few asteroids, you fly into another phase gate. and through the precursor maze you go. Coming out, you see badly animated clouds that don't move from the screen and a storm. At which point you start noticing precursor buildings through the clouds. And as you descend further, you see this beautiful view. Okay, now roll credits. Okay, in all seriousness though, I'm- I'ma be honest right here. I was expecting way less. Like, I was expecting a garbage ending. Maybe I just prepared myself to be disappointed, you know, but I was really worried that two years just wasn't enough to make a good game. But it looks like Unknown Worlds proved me completely wrong, and... I mean, I'm looking to any future projects that they start right now. I mean, imagine a Subnautica 3 above zero this time? Oh, that would be pretty epic. Also, we're going to be doing a video on the old story of Below Zero in, like, a few weeks or months, or depending on how our schedule is looking. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that, and if you like this video, then consider subscribing, and maybe even like it. And if I missed anything, then comment that down below, and, you know, I'll check it out, and if you say something mean, I'll cry for hours. And also consider joining the Discord server. It's, like, really epic. Anyways, that's it for this video, and we hope to see you next time.